What's up, guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Welcome to another episode of Black Hat Python. And this one, we'll be covering SSH tunneling. We're going to start with you know, the, the forward SSH tunneling, okay? So I'll explain in a second what is actually happening uh, for you more visual people out here that might not know what this is yet. Now, the nice thing I'll say, just straight off, is that we don't actually have to write any code for this. Paramico has in their GitHub a file called rforward.py that works out of the box and will do a forward SSH tunnel for us. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm gonna start by just breaking down what is going on with forward tunneling here, SSH tunneling. So imagine that, you know, we as attackers, we're somewhere, we're somewhere over here, right? We're outside on the outside internet, right? Now, let's say there is a server that we really want to get to. It has critical data on there that we know would be lucrative for us as attackers. The only problem is that is on the internal network of another company. Okay, that, that's the only issue. Now, this server here, it communicates back and forward with, you know, many other servers on the network, really, right? Um, a, a multitude of servers. But specifically, it communicates back and forth between the web server uh, and itself, right? And this web server, it's probably on like a DMZ or something like that. But it has a NIC, you know, a network connection that is able to connect to the network, or perhaps even for a more simplistic explanation, maybe it's even on the same network altogether, right? Because that could be the case here. But one way or another, this has access to the server, all right? That's what you really, that's the really important part here is there's a server we're able to get to. It has access to the other servers. It's taken a while to erase this here. I'm surprised I'm not able to make this bigger, but it might be an easier way to do this. I wonder if I maybe do this and then fill it with the color white. Kind of, whoa, kind of winging this on the fly here. Um, not sure what happened here. <laughs> Using paint can be a little bit difficult. So let me just redraw this really fast for you guys, just so that we all understand what is going on here. So we are out here, right? This is us as attackers. For simplicity's sake, there's a network here. There's a server we want to get to. And there's a web server that we can get to as an attacker. We can get to this uh, web server because it's internet facing, right? This site is not internet facing. Let's say we are able to compromise this server. We're able to get code execution on this. And this server can communicate back and forth with the server we want to get to. We can actually do something called a forward SSH tunnel to get access to this server here to be able to run uh, commands, send stuff to this server, right? So depending on the port we use, let's say we choose uh, port 8000 in this case. 8008 is what they used in the book. So we will map that to our loopback address here. And port 8008. And apologies if that's a little difficult to read. I don't normally write in paint. But uh, so yeah, anything now now if we if we make this uh, this tunnel here, this is SSH forward tunnel, any command that we send, any data we send to this socket here, our loopback address on port 8008, will be sent on to this target server here. All right. And if we were using actually SSH, like the standard SSH, right, this is kind of what the command would look like, something like this. The server, the port that we want to that we want to use, right? We're choosing this port. And then let's say this is called, this server is called target, let's just say. For simplicity's sake, right? So target. 
And now it depends what port you're going to use here on this box that you're going to forward on. Let's say that this is running some internal web server. We could forward port 80, right? So now basically what's happening is, oh, right. And then we, we, we have credentials, let's just say. So I don't know, Justin at SSH server, right? Because this will be the SSH server here. And over here is the SSH client. All right. So Justin at, that's the at sign, SSH server, right? So <clears throat> what this will do is it will actually map target port 80 um, to our localhost 8008. It'll send it on using these credentials, uh, the SSH credentials that we have. So boom, it'll forward it right on, right on through, right? To that target server. So that's basically what we're doing. We got Paramico here, um, specifically rforward.py. And let's just start off the main function here, right? So with this main function, we have going on is that uh, we'll make sure that uh, the arguments are passed in here, right? So options, server, and remote. And from here, it's going to set up the, uh, the connection, kind of like we were seeing before with Paramico. So that's basically what all this stuff is here. And particularly, the truly important part is this here, right? Reverse forward tunnel. And that's passing in a number of parameters, right? But if we look at that function, we see it right here. And essentially what this is doing is it's maintaining a you know, two connection methods, uh, transport and the encrypted connection channel, and then the channel itself, right? You see that here. So that's these two, right? It's going to be multi-threaded, of course, but it's basically, you see it's all inside the while loop, so it's going to continuously uh, be listening for the, the connections. But then perhaps the most important part is the handler function. It's going to do quite a bit. Uh, let's see. Right here, this handler function. So this will be your, the way that it can actually, as the name would imply, handle the connection, right? So we got it. We set up our socket here. And it, it'll let you know if there's any errors, it fails, or anything like that. Yeah, basically data is sent and received. So I wouldn't get too bogged down in the details. Just understand the big picture of what's going on. Uh, you won't really need to write this code because it works so well out of the box. Now, I can't really demo this because of <laughs> this kind of setup that's required here, right? I mean, I, I could set that up, but I don't think it's really worth, um, worth demoing that specifically. But basically, all you need to know is that you can run commands basically as if you were running it on your against your local host port 8008 or 8008 or whatever port you choose. And it will basically run it as if you're running it on this because it's going to go you're, it's going to go here and then it's going to forward it on to the target in this case. Right. So that is the gist of it. Uh, if you understand how to do, if you ever use like proxy chains or anything like that, maybe use some cobalt strike and there's some functionality in there to do that, then you, you definitely know what I'm talking about. You've done this before pretty much, or you can even do it through SSH as we, as we see here with the, this would be the equivalent just using just plain SSH, right? But the beauty of this is sometimes SSH won't be on the box and then you can create your own port forward, or not port forwarding, but SSH tunneling, forward tunnel script, um, basically using the Paramico 
rforward.py. So hopefully that was helpful to you. And we didn't get too in depth here with how it works, but we basically just stepped through a lot of the code here and got the bird's eye view of what's happening. Now feel free to really dive into all the different options in here if you want. And all the, you know, all the functions, parameters, because there's a lot more that you can do with this as well. But uh, this is just kind of bare bones what you need to know about it. And then in the next video, what we'll be doing is we'll be moving right along into the next uh, big category of attacks that we're going to be creating. This one will be writing a sniffer. So we're going to start doing some packet sniffing using Scappy. So if that sounds interesting, I'll see you guys writing those videos. But in the meantime, if you want to catch up on some of the other Black Hat Python videos, check out the playlist of videos on screen now. And I will see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.